These big enemies can definitely be a pain since they have a ton of health. I really suggest if you have the power meter, to go into it when you fight these guys. Because, when you use it on them, they only die in a matter of a couple of hits as opposed to doing the spin kick a ton, or even your melee attacks, which will take a very long amount of time to actually defeat them. The good thing is, with any of the really big enemies, they usually give you at least one piece of power meter back, as well as usually one piece of heart to refill some of the health you may lose. Those big guys will defeat you in one or two hits. Now we have a rematch against the boss from the first stage, however it's two of them at a time, and I picked up the cleaver from the previous room, which is a great help to me to defeat these guys in only a few hits. As you can see, the meat cleaver is extremely useful and has that really cool effect when I kill certain enemies with it. These guys are pretty easy to take out, however they have a relatively decent range of their attack when they stick their arms out. So if you're going to try to hit them with a weapon, be careful when getting in close, or you can use the spin kick from any distance and just hope they're stupid enough to walk into you, like most of the enemies in the game are. As we enter the next room, it's time for our next boss battle, and you're going to have all these little tentacle guys coming at you at first, and they're a real pain trying to keep your weapon in your hand. But for the most part, you're going to have the power meter, so change into that form, and be prepared to take out this boss. As you can see, I hit him from a huge distance away there. It's just one of the benefits of having this move. Now he will block a lot, which can definitely be a pain, and anytime he jumps into the air, he's going to drop a lot of the mini maggot worms actually on top of you, so be careful of those. When you get the opportunity, just keep doing your special move, and after a little bit, he goes into his second form, and you can see the maggots all coming out of his head, which is really cool. One hit later, he explodes, and we've completed level 2, and saved Jennifer. Once again, since I was able to complete the level in a certain time, I get to the bonus stage. However, this is not the bonus stage that would actually warp me past the next level. So thankfully, I don't have that to deal with. As we begin level 3, our goal here is to try to get to David's bedroom as quick as possible in order to save him. These enemies will charge you from a distance, so be careful when they're ready to charge, and be prepared to do a spin kick as soon as they get near you so you actually can hit them. Once again, stay at, try to stay out of range of those blue guys' claw, because as you can see, when they tried to attack, they have a really good long range of attack. One other downside in the game, especially when it comes to the time limit, is the amount of time it takes for you to get back up once you get knocked down by an enemy. As you can see when I got knocked down just a few seconds ago, it took a few seconds in order for Rick to finally boast himself back up and be able to get back to his feet. And anytime you have a weapon and you get knocked down, more than likely it's going to get taken away before you're able to stand back up again to pick it back up. 
mastering the spin kick is crucial in order to beat this game in a certain amount of time, because you can see that I can keep enemies trapped against walls for the most part when using my spin kick. As I pick up another weapon, the baseball bat, which Rick holds pretty interestingly, but I just gotta love that effect when you smash these enemies in the head. Especially these guys right here that are jumping. That great splash effect when their head just explodes is absolutely awesome. This room is extremely annoying as furniture is flying at you from all different sides. You have books, table lamps, and stools flying at you. So just try to do your best. I usually like to hang about the bottom of the screen, but I don't think there's any possible way to get through that room without taking some damage. Thankfully, the objects in there don't do too much. In this room, we have another rematch from the boss of the first level, however, he's a different color this time, and he's spitting acid at us from a distance. I'm going to change into the power move in order to do some of these big power hits to him and take him out quickly, because thankfully, once again, just like most big enemies, not only do they have an orb in the room, but they give me at least one orb when they die, plus a little bit of extra health. When you see the background change, as you can see right now how it's this weird coloring and everything, that pretty much signifies that you're near the end of this stage. As you can see, since we made it to David's bedroom, all of a sudden the spirit flees David's body and then sucks him into the floor, and then of all things that starts to attack us, the teddy bear does. To change into your form, the teddy bear is very clumsy in its initial form, and after only a hit or two, it'll change into a more menacing form with the head broken off and a mutant inside. Thankfully though, he doesn't block very much and only takes a couple of hits from our power move to explode him and complete the stage.
And like, of course, before, we have another bonus stage to go through to collect some extra lives, as well as to uh, destroy some more bad guys if you haven't had enough fun with doing that. Our next level is probably the harder stages of the game to get through quickly, and it introduces easily the hardest enemy in the game as well. The fourth stage takes place in Rick's Mansion's basement, and most of the enemies return from the other levels, however late in the stage we will meet a brand new enemy that, like I said, is probably the hardest in the game. By completing this level as quick as possible, 